Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here today to share a light up card featuring the Greetery stamp stencil and die set. However, I'm going to start this video off a little bit differently because I've been talking about how I want to use my card making supplies and using my stash and this is how I use the Greetery's pinwheel stencil into my planner. So I know that not everyone keeps a planner. I know that not everyone spends this much time on their planner, but I was going through a creative slump at the end of the year and I felt like I wasn't really using all my items and I really wanted to incorporate them into other aspects of my life. So I do keep a planner, uh, it's a bullet journal, and I used it to decorate for the month of January. So I hope you enjoyed this small little insight into my life and how I use my supplies for other purposes. And if you're interested in further details of the planner, I would be happy to share my process with you as well. But for today's card, I am using the Greetery Stamp Stencil and Die Set. And then I'm lighting up this card using Pure Blossom Press Easy Lights along with some pretty pink posh embellishments and some Ink on 3 Atelier inks. So I wanted to create this card because I had gone through a process in a previous year where if I created a planner spread, I would make a coordinating card that goes along with it. And so the idea here is the same. I wanted to use the items I used in my planner into making a card. For the card, I am using this Make Art Station, which is a magnetic board with four very strong magnets and it holds down your stencil. If you've watched previous videos, I use washi tape usually to hold down my stencils and I didn't really think that I would like this, but I wanted to test it out and I actually do. It works really well. Those magnets are really strong and it does keep the stencils in place and I don't waste as much washi by doing this. I'm going in with two colors at first. It's Sweet Petunia Pink and My Jam Purple and I'm inking it up with a heavy hand. And then the second stencil, I will go in with a lighter hand and I won't re-ink the blending tools at all. And I'll just go in and ink it up. The Greetery Pinwheel stencil has four different stencils, two of which which coordinate with each other and they have two sets of them. So this is the first set and it creates these perfect five pinwheels. For the second set of two, it will fill out the extra space and they are all marked in etchings on the stencil itself. So there's going to be A1, A2, B1, B2. So you can know exactly which coordinate with each other, but it's also pretty intuitive to figure it out if you place them on top of each other as well. For my second set, I'm going in with Peacock Blue and Goddess Green. And again, I'm going heavy on the first layer and then when I have the second stencil layer I'm going to just use whatever ink I have left on my blending foam and ink up the rest. I do use a bit of washi to mark off the space because some of the pinwheels are actually pretty close to each other. So I'm just using that to kind of mask so I don't accidentally ink up the wrong areas. And this was so easy to do. I did it for my planner, I did it for these cards, and it is really quick. I think the longest process of this entire card is just doing the lights themselves. I had this idea because the standalone pinwheel that I'm inking up right now comes with a coordinating die and that coordinating die actually cuts a little circle in the middle of the pinwheel and so I was thinking well I can have a light right behind it. I also had seen a previous card by Amanda who is the owner of Pear Blossom Press and she actually lit up embellishments which was so cool. Because the other pinwheel parts don't have the circle cut out in the middle, I'm using Hero Arts Infinity Circles to cut out a little circle in the middle of the pinwheel. I also use the die sentiment that is in the set and it says let's party. I cut it out using some gold cardstock. I also cut out a second layer out of white cardstock just to add it add a bit more dimension to it and give it that lift because we will be putting foam tape behind these pinwheels. I wanted the embellishment also to pop up. So for the pinwheels itself, 
I added double-sided adhesive all around the little circle because I'm going to put a piece of vellum right behind it. Normally vellum will be right on top of the light so the light doesn't shine too brightly. However, I wanted to try out the embellishment trick and I also needed to have something to hold up the embellishments. So the vellum is there for that reason alone. If you didn't have the vellum, the embellishments would sit directly onto the light. And I really didn't want to put glue directly on the light. So I thought that just, you know, adding a little bit of liquid glue on top of vellum, putting the embellishment on top, and then the light shine from underneath would work well, and it does. I did make a mistake while making this card. Normally with this card panel, I would actually mark off the center with a pencil so I know exactly where the lights need to be on this card. But I already went ahead and added the vellum, added the embellishment so I wasn't able to do that. I'll show you how I deal with that later. For the unit itself, there is a button that you press that will light up the lights once you insert the battery. And I decided that the perfect placement for the light would be right behind that big purple pinwheel. Because I didn't mark off where the pinwheel centers were, I placed the panel right over the cardstock and I kind of just used a pencil and guessed where it would be. And I kept testing it and kept going back and forth just to see if it would work and it does. So if you forget to mark off the centers of where you want to light up, you can just use a pencil and kind of guesstimate and keep messing with it and trying it. But definitely if I were to redo this card, I would have marked off the center of the pinwheel ahead of time. For any light up card using these lights, I always use two layers of foam, mainly because that's as high as the unit itself would be. If you're only using one layer of foam, there definitely will be a bulge on your card and I don't really like that. So two layers of foam is fine. I use this cheap foam tape from Amazon. I always have it linked down in my description box if you're interested. I just don't see the reason to spend that much money on foam because it's always hidden behind a card panel anyway so it doesn't really matter how expensive your foam is it, as long as it works and this works really well for me. The tricky part of this different shape that I'm popping up is that I don't know exactly where the foam should go so I used a pencil and kind of marked off the space that the foam should be contained within and also another good tip for using these lights is that you want to enclose your light with foam. Anywhere that I have the light, I will surround it with foam, mainly because it, once it lights up, the light seeps to other areas. So I want it contained within the little circle. And so once I do that, I'm ready to adhere the panel to the card. I use my Misty sometimes to help me line everything up and it works really well because you have a corner and you know exactly that it will be flush. But sometimes I'll pull out my Misty to do that, which I did here. For my standalone pinwheel, I am just Again, popping it up on foam because I want the dimension to be the same and I'm putting it right over the light and it's helpful to turn on the light and put that piece right directly over it. The sentiment itself, Let's Party, looks kind of plain. So I decided to pull out an additional sentiment and stamped it on white cardstock and I cut it in a strip. This is my other mistake with the card. I should have stamped the press here sentiment on the panel before popping it up on the foam. I got really lucky that it stamped so well, but I was ready to go in with a black pen if it didn't stamp perfectly. If I were to do it again, I would do it beforehand. So I'm just adhering the sentiment, let's party, and I'm popping up the white strip sentiment on foam as well because I just wanted the dimension to be throughout this card. If I already am popping things up, I might as well pop up the sentiment as well. I thought this card turned out really fun, but I wanted to also include more of those embellishments because the bottom part looks kind of plain. So I just pulled out all the three colors of the embellishments and placed them all around the sentiment just to fill in that empty space. Like there's that empty space right under let's and I thought that just adding a sentiment really filled up the space and made it look more festive. 
that's it for today's card. It's really fun. It was exactly as I envisioned. And I hope you enjoyed it because I enjoyed making it. I'll see you guys next time for another video. Bye.